Support for the foundation comes in many forms. And I'd like to start in terms of tributes to you, the audience. I know that many of you have traveled from afar. So thank you and with much appreciation for your presence here today. Um, I'd also like to thank the city and the Royal Theatre here for their support. Uh, extraordinary city and a beautiful building, a great venue. Um, I'd like to thank the incredible performance of the moderators, the keynote speakers, and the participants. If ever we needed proof about the value of multidisciplinary thinking and exploring and research, then today has to be a great celebration of that approach. I, I'd also like to thank the media partners, El Pais and Bloomberg Media, and the foundation team, and my wife, extraordinary group, young, energetic, dedicated, and in the spirit of the, uh, of the target audience of the, of the foundation. Um, I found myself uh, moved by Neil Ferguson and the kind of split in terms of the optimism, pessimism, um, and I was reminded that it was once said uh, that if you want to look far ahead, then first look far back. And it seems to me that I instanced this morning the great smog. I didn't say that it was just the Clean Air Act. It was actually the technology change from coal to gas. And uh, the 19th century was instanced just now in this uh, delightful exchange and its thinking. And I was reminded that really there is a history of technology responding to crises. And um, the, in, I think it was 1858, there was something called the Great Stink in London. And disease, cholera, was rampant. And the stench was so unbearable that Parliament could not even sit because the Thames was an open sewer. And eventually, the act was got together by a guy called Joseph Bazalgette. And he created not just the sewer system for London as it was then. He created it double the size, and we still use it today, two centuries later. But not only that, it was holistic thinking. He created one of the greatest embankments, the, the embankment alongside the Thames, with incredible balustrades, great lighting. Also, the concept of underground transport was integrated into it. Very, very early example. <clears throat> so, technology a little later in the 19th century, in 1894, we had something called the Great Manure Crisis. And the Great Manure Crisis in the largest city in the world, London, was caused by the horses. London and New York were kind of bathrooms for horses. And the Times said, in 50 years' time, London will be nine foot deep under all the horse manure. I mean, just to put it into perspective, um, New York had 100,000 horses. And there were the equivalent of the single cars, the handsome cabs, there were the buses, the handsome cabs had one horse, the buses had 12 horses, the drays, which were the equivalent of the trucks, also had 12 or, 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 or more horses. And they called in 1898 the first town planning conference in history, and they called it in New York to address this crisis, and they allowed themselves 10 days. And after three days, they gave up and they all went home. 
because they said the problem was incapable of solution. By 1912, thanks to two guys called Daimler and Ford, there were no horses in either city. The car, which is today's enemy, was yesterday the friend, the savior. I think really from historical examples like that, we realize now that the magnitude of the crisis, the health threatening crisis, that needs the same kind of action, concerted action, nationwide, globally, not just in terms of cities. And for me, this exchange, the exchanges today give me great hope and great confidence in the future. Thank you.